and welcome back to my channel. So today we have a big Q&A answering all things bikini prep and living in Bali and life because I put a little question box up on my Instagram and some of the questions were so good and I really love making YouTube videos for you guys so I decided to do the questions here on YouTube instead of Instagram but if you are new here and just clicking on the video for the first time I just wanted to say the biggest thank you and also if you are returning as well means the most to me because I just love this little community we have over here. So yeah, if you do like today's video, I would love if you gave it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe as well. But like I said, I just wanted to answer these questions for you guys because I thought they were super valuable and just, yeah, really grateful that they were sent over because I feel like they can definitely help. And I love watching people's Q and A's because then you're like able to relate to people or you get inspiration. And I know I don't live like the most normal of lives because I live in like Bali, which is like very random. But yeah, maybe you want to come and I can answer questions or you're prepping for a show or thinking of it, or maybe just want to lose weight, then this video I feel will be able to bring you some value or just some entertainment. So yeah, let's just get started with the questions because they, there's a lot of them and they're really great. So do, 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 do. where to start, where to start. Okay, some of them are also very personal as well about like love and different things. So I'll answer this one first. How did you get into competing? So I don't know if I've ever told this story here on YouTube and if you are a first time competitor or thinking of it, like this is just how I personally got into it. So I was in a really funny place with my body image and what I thought of myself and I was really struggling. I had no routine and no really direction in my life. I was just sort of like trying to figure life out and get by and I was currently living in London and working for Lululemon. So I just started like working out and getting into like Activity and I was like a class bunny and a cardio bunny because I was like, you know, just trying to get fit and trying to get healthy. And my manager at the time in Lululemon was a bodybuilder and she competed in WBFF. And if you've been here since 2016, I would love to know down in the comments if you have been, if you're an OG. That was the first show I ever prepped for because basically I watched her prep for the competition and I'd never seen someone who was so dedicated to their craft, to what they loved. She prepped all her food and I personally really struggled with eating at the time and eating well. And I just had such a bad relationship with food and she had such a great relationship with food. She had such a great routine and she just honored and loved her body so much. And I was like, I want that. Like that's so inspiring to me. So that's when I decided to enter a bodybuilding competition. And I thought if I entered this bodybuilding competition, I would stick to the gym. I would stick to my diet. Like. By diet, I don't mean like just dieting. Like I had such a negative relationship with food that like I would under eat some days and then over eat other days. It was just really all over the shop. And I just wanted the consistency and the motivation and routine and bodybuilding gave me all of those things and gave me a purpose of like going to the gym and doing something for myself and taking care of myself. Because if I went to the gym and worked out really hard, I didn't want to then like not eat after. Um, and you know, I wanted to nourish my body and also on the flip side, I didn't want to overeat any crap because I just done something that felt so good for my body. So then I did one competition and I loved it so that I secretly entered two more and told nobody the next two weekends. And I went and did both of those competitions all by myself with no one in the audience and no one watching me and I actually won. And that was how I just sort of got into it in 2016. And ever since then, like it's just been, I'll do a year of shows and then I typically take a year off and then I'll do a year of shows and take a year off. And that's just been the way it has been. So I've done 2016, 18, 20, and now it's 2022. So it'll be my fourth season competing, but like I've been doing it since 2016. How long do you have to train before your first bikini prep? So I honestly hadn't trained very much, but like it depends what your purpose is. If you want to get into competing, like is it to win or is it just to do a show? It's like, depends what your motivation is. Like for me, it was just stepping on stage and being really proud of what I had done. And now I compete for a different purpose. Like I'm very much trying to win and progress in the sport. So everyone has their different drive. Like you might overcome something and like stepping on stage might just be like the cherry on the top of the cake, just of like all the hard work that you put in to reach that place in your life. But there's no amount of time that I would say needs to go in 
to something before you compete but like naturally it's a bodybuilding show so you want to have good muscle mass suitable for the division that you're competing in I definitely was not when I look back I had barely trained I had like no muscle I just did it to get on stage so now I've obviously been working to build muscle to be more competitive because that's what they look for in the sport so maybe you have good muscle maturity and then you can step on stage but if not I would say build a solid foundation and then compete okay so moving on to food because this is relevant so how many calories are you eating I currently do a meal plan and I'm actually going to do a full day of eating typically my protein is around like 140 ish and then fats are always around like 30 40 50 depending on where I'm at and then carbs typically will change but my protein and fats always sort of stay similar and um, yeah just the carbs change depending on like where I'm at and like if I'm prepping for a show or not so my maintenance is probably around like 1800 to 2000 calories but then when you're dieting it's a bit different so I started my prep on 1700 and we've just been gradually decreasing from there on my meal plan just like tapering carbs down so right now my carbs are around like 100 or so but I just stick to my meal plan are there any seasoning on your zucchini spirals if you watch my Instagram you'll know I put seasoning I salt all my food love salt and then I also have different kind of seasonings like different kind of rubs and and spices I just love spices and seasoning they completely transform a dish so if you're not seasoning your food like your cray cray because there's no point in eating just like plain food when you can be putting like cinnamon on your sweet potatoes or like yeah like cajun or like rosemary on your meats it's just game changer game changer do you have any shows after india planned and do you plan on competing for a while or just every so often so actually very much like what i said i'll do a couple of shows within a year like it, it seems to be on average like three to five three ish shows a year three four one year i did five um and then I'll take time off until I feel like I'm at a really healthy place within my body and my life. And it's just been the, I guess, the cycles of life. It's not good to compete all the time because you need to come out and give your body a chance to reset and like your hormones to get good. So that's just the way life has flowed for me. It's been very intuitive and I've always just prepped for a show when, when it felt right. Um, I don't have any plans to compete after India because the goal is to win and do like a one and done situation and this isn't because I don't want to compete more I love competing it's because I genuinely really want to win my pro card in India and so if I win my pro card I won't then go and do a pro show I will probably take some time off to build if for whatever reason I didn't win my pro card in India I would look at other shows but I haven't actually looked at other shows because like I'm just setting my focus on the goal, which is that one show and that's what I really want to achieve and if it gets to a point where you know I have to look at different things and different shows then I will but right now I'm just like India what is it like having a long distance coach I've always had long distance coaches I've never had like an in-person coach all of my clients are pretty much in America there's nothing that my coach could say to me in person that he wouldn't say online because I send videos and photos and then my clients do the same for me for example if there's someone I want to work with or I connect with and they're not here like a distance means so little because technology is so amazing so if you follow someone and or you want to do something and you see a coach online and you want to work with them but you're worried about the distance I would say just go for it because yeah it's amazing and I've always had long distance coaches and it's always worked out what would I recommend for someone that trains three to four times a week and wants to lose weight so actually training three to four times a week is perfect I would recommend probably like yeah three to four but I would do full body sessions if you're doing three four you could probably do two upper and two lower if you're splitting up your body parts but basically you want to be hitting the muscle frequency like twice per week so for example if you wanted to also build your bum or like um you know just develop the muscle mass I would want to train that muscle twice a week but if you're just training for typically weight loss I would recommend um including cardio because obviously cardio is going to help you burn fat and then your diet is such a key thing here you want to be making sure that you're eating in a calorie deficit um across the whole week and this doesn't just have to come from food I would say also that making sure you're expending more energy than you're consuming so it's finding the balance of burning more energy with your training and your cardio and then eating a little bit less and being really consistent everyone's always asking me like how I've made the progress that I have and it's consistency if you do want to lose weight it does require dedication but it doesn't work it's not just sacrifice it's just dedication and consistency I think are the biggest things and then making sure that like I said that um, you're burning more energy than you're consuming. So yeah, that's the 
key. Do you get medical advice before cutting to make sure it's safe? Yes, always, 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 always. I get a full blood work panel done and this is mostly to check my hormones and make sure they are good and I recommend this for everyone because you can get your cortisol levels checked, you can make sure that your hormones are functioning properly, you can check that your liver and everything like that is optimal and I think it's really important before starting a bodybuilding prep that if you're putting your body under more stress because you're eating less and doing more cardio, that you're healthy and obviously you know your hormones can be lowered and your cortisol can be increased but it's how you mitigate those things and like take care of them so if you saw my video a few videos back I did a full supplement routine and this is because like I really value supplementing my body when I am eating a little bit less I make sure to take things that support stress in the body so like nootropics, ashwagandha, holy basil leaf just different things that I know if my cortisol is going to be increased I can really take care of the inflammation and the stress in my body and then I obviously try and look after my hormones as much as possible I have salmon in my diet every single day because obviously omega-3s are really good and then I look after my gut health as well with a probiotic so always say if you are going to do something like a cut like get your blood work done and make sure your body is in a good position to do so because you don't want to like add fuel to a fire okay let's move on to some life questions would i marry uh, someone younger than me probably not unless they were like way further ahead of me in life in terms of like have like experienced a lot more of life and done a lot of life because I think it's important that for a man that he knows his purpose and he's living in his purpose to be a fully embodied masculine and really be able to hold space for the feminine. So I don't think I would marry someone younger unless they had fully stepped into their masculine frame yet. Um, but you know, I'm open to meeting whomever I meant to meet in life. The next one is, if the right person arrives in your life, would you consider having a family? Absolutely, definitely on my cards. I do, however, want to achieve the goals I want to achieve in bodybuilding first, and then do life after, but yeah, for sure. For sure, for sure, for sure. So cute, little babies. Oh. But yeah, not, not now. I'm not ready right now, that's the thing. But like, I'm definitely, would be ready to meet someone, but I definitely have more things I need to do myself first and I feel like that's why I haven't met my person yet because there's still jade things that need to be done before I like enter that partnership I suppose. Okay someone said you mentioned before that you have a bad back does it still bother you? Oh my god I think I don't share a lot of like the lows in my life on YouTube and maybe I'll talk about it I, I'm not one of those people that's like a vic like I think of like myself as a victim or I dwell on the negativity but life is a roller coaster and I definitely just like show the fitness and the good and all that but like trust me life is hard as well and I've been given my fair share of like make it make sense make it make sense battles where you feel like you're constantly trying and trying and trying and like life is just like difficult in certain ways and my back was one of those things I had a bad back for like honestly it still bothers me a little like a year and a half it's still something I'm very mindful of I just rather than dwelling on the fact that it's bad I'm like what is it teaching me and um, what can I learn from this experience and I do believe a lot of injuries and, and things that happen in the body aren't just like injuries as such like it's our body's way of communicating with us and um a lot of our emotions and our trauma and stuff is stored in the body as well and I feel like it's just this constant like healing journey that I'm on and my back was just a part of that healing journey but I'm still doing the work on it basically and um, I saw a healer last week for it but it's definitely moving in the right direction listen life be crazy sometimes do you speak Indonesian yes I actually do not fluently but I do speak it which is like really cool I was learning for a little while on Duolingo and I found my like Duolingo was really good for teaching me words like random words like dress and socks and just random things like that however I do think the best way to like pick up sentences is to like ask and speak but um not perfect but I would love to speak a language fluently in Indonesian I just think it's such the Indonesian people are so beautiful so then to be able to communicate with them it's just like amazing I'm coming to Bali next year can I get around without a moped I don't have a license and I'm a bit worried. No one has a license. I actually do have a license, but like no one has a license. Learn how to drive a moped first. You can actually do lessons here so that you are safe on the road. However, if you don't feel comfortable or you don't want to drive a moped, don't. You can go jack 
everywhere. Gojek is sort of like Uber bikes. <laughs> you just basically, a little driver picks you up, you drive, boom, 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 um, and it's super cheap. But I would say if you want to drive and you want that freedom, I personally don't like getting on Gojeks. I don't remember the last time I was on one, just because I don't really feel safe getting on a bike and being on the back of someone's bike that I don't know. And so yeah, for that reason, I just like personally feel safer driving myself. But if you don't want to and you don't feel safe driving, you don't need to drive here. I've got another two prep questions here actually, which I think are good. Easiest way to prep and know what to prep to eat healthy or how to calculate calories. I have a guide on my website and it has a little like macro breakdown thing in it, but you can just like Google macro calculators and get an average, but the best way to calculate your macros is just through trial and error. So you know, you can see how you feel, you can see what your hunger levels are like. I always say for your body weight, you should do around like a pound to a pound point two, um, a gram per pound of body weight, and that's a good way to work out your protein. And then you can obviously work out your fats and your carbs around it. That's why also having a coach is really good, but you can find macro calculators online. I find for like women between like 40 to 70 grams of fat is like, on average and it also depends on like um, someone's preference so do they prefer fats do they prefer carbs because that's what changes because there's no set macros that will just work for everyone and also as your body changes your macros might adapt so I find that as I get leaner and leaner and leaner my carbs actually start increasing once after they've decreased so it's sort of like this I they decrease them to get leaner and then as I get really lean I almost have to increase them because then my body just like starts using them up but it's, it's all trial and error and working with a coach if you're unsure and then when you once you you learn the tools and you learn how your body works then you might not need a coach because you might be able to do it yourself but yeah I would try maybe a basic macro calculator online to start off with I think there's still on bodybuilding.com or like I said work with someone I actually think Christian Guzman has a really good YouTube video on it and then I really like this one as like an ending one when prep is over, do you experience any guilt or anxiety about eating normally again? No, because during the preps, I always include the foods that I like. So for example, if you watch any of my other preps, like I always had dark chocolate every single day because I loved chocolate. Like even on show day, I was eating dark chocolate because I had it for with my breakfast every day just because I loved it. So that when I finished prep, I wasn't like craving chocolate because I'd had it the whole time, right? And um, this prep was a little bit different, which I'll open up about, but just because I have been experiencing a lot of food allergies. Literally, this is what I mean. Sometimes I'm like, what the heck, life? Make it make sense. But yeah, I just eat all the foods I love. So I have oats in my diet because I'm really loving oats right now and rice, just like foods I like. And then I don't want to go crazy. It's finding the balance of still remaining like as someone who is a personal trainer and in the fitness industry and is a sponsored athlete, right? That I have to maintain like, fitness is still important to me and eating healthy is still important to me, but then I can still go out to restaurants and get dessert with friends once or twice a week if I wanted and not feel guilty about it, but it wouldn't be normal to go off the rails and just binge like seven days a week or have dessert every single day because I don't feel like that's um, in alignment with what's my truth right now, right? So it's all about making sure that you're living in alignment with what's true to you and it would feel not true to me if I was eating desserts every day, and this wouldn't be because I feel guilty about eating the desserts and what I'm actually eating, it would be more about this like, it's not what I believe, right? So it's out of alignment. And um, yeah, I definitely, the further out of shows I get, the more relaxed I become around um, just eating out and enjoying, you know, normality, but I still am very true to myself. So like, I don't, crave fried food very much. I prefer like eating fresh, healthy, abundant, natural food. And then of course treating myself on occasion to cookies that are still gluten-free and vegan because it's like that balance, right? So yeah, it's always about finding the balance post-show with your truth because obviously you care about fitness and stuff because you're competing and then also, you know, still being able to not feel like restricted because you do restrict it's obvious you do restrict the other things such as like cookies and cakes and stuff on prep because they don't serve the goal. Of course, I could eat a slice of cake every single day on prep and it fit my calories, but then the rest of my food would be poverty and um, yeah, it's not as optimal as something else. So yeah, when after show, it's just finding the balance and that's important. But I hope this has answered some of your questions. You've got to know me a little bit more and you enjoyed spending the last like 20 odd minutes with me. I 
just love sitting down and chatting with you guys and I know it's obviously not as like maybe as exciting as like watching a vlog and running around and stuff but also I just feel like I can be authentically me and really connect with you so that means a lot as well so I hope you have enjoyed today's video if you haven't already if you're watching this and you haven't hit that like button please hit it leave a comment if you made it to the end and I will see you guys in the next video bye guys